Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by FKP Advisors. Thank you so much for your support. Here's an interview I was looking forward to. Here's a man, I want you to meet John Rushing. John was incarcerated for nearly 30 years and just recently got out, just got out. Saw the world all around him, the cars going by quickly. So many things have changed in his whole world, but he's changed a great deal as well. He's ready for the changes. Interesting man to listen to. I think you'll enjoy John. John, I'm looking at you. All right, this short period of time is the world going by in a hurry. What's the what's 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 blowing your mind about being out? It's getting out into the uh, the stores and all, and how everything's changed over time. The technology, and uh, since I've been here, I, I I've been very very lucky. How about people driving? Blessed. Oh, fast, aren't they? Yeah, it, it's, it's the speed limit's what. 75 now or 70? No, it, it might be 70, but people are going 85, 90. It's just like people are in a hurry. Yeah, everybody's in a hurry. Yeah. So it's, is it a little different than you thought it might be for after all those years? Uh, yes, it is. When uh, when I was, when the uh, turning center brought me down to the bus station, dropped me off. I mean, Nashville is grown so much. Yeah. I mean, there's buildings everywhere now. And, a lot uh, of cranes. Yeah, cranes are still building. And but when I got out of that van, the TDOC van, man, I didn't move. My feet was stuck in, <laughs> like it was in a bucket of concrete. That's how shocked I was. Because there's, <laughs> it, it looks scary. It's, you know, it's. Yeah. It's uh, there's a lot of you know people running around staring at you like, and, man, when I seen uh, Ben Valor pull up. I was just going to say, I'll bet coming in here with this facility is like taking a, whew, okay, yeah. Lord, let me take this one day at a time. That's got to be a joy. It's kind of like I was home. Yeah. That's way set up. You know, everybody's nice. You know, you got your own bedroom, you know, food, everything's here for you, you know. And just, Tell me about Crow. You said you were from East Nashville. Yes, sir. You, uh, you grew up here. I grew up in East Nashville, and, uh, you know, I, I got a, a, a long sentence you know, for a uh, murder charge. And uh, now, since I've been in prison, I've been clean since 2009. Hmm. And uh, I feel so much better. But you were a kid, or a young fellow, when that when that charge pulled down. What kind of a guy were you then? I was drinking, drinking and smoking marijuana. That's all, you know, that's, that was my thing, just drinking and smoking. Take me your family. Did you have parents? Did you uh, were they together? Had brothers and sisters? What was life like when you were, let's say, fifteen years old? I was. I started drinking when I was thirteen. Really? Yes. Why? Because my brother was drinking, and I picked it up behind him. But mom and dad was always there for me. You know, they was always giving me the good advice. I never took it. I wanted to be with the crowd. You know? So you were influenced by other people that began to draw you away. Yes, my own brothers. I followed him. How many brothers do you have? Uh, I got, I got, I had three, two passed away since I've been in here, and they were the two that I followed. You know. Wow. If you don't mind, how old were you when you got your charge? Uh, Twenty six. Was it a five minutes of anger? Five it, minutes something going on? It was just a blackout, drinking, and got an argument, and it led to a, a terrible mistake. And, you know, it's something I have to live with the rest of my life. What was it like when they slammed those gates, those, you know, bars shut, and you knew where you were going to be for a long time? I never thought I'd get out. I never, ever thought I'd be free again. So you just set your mind to, here is where I'm going to wind up. Yeah. Was God any part of that? At times, he'd, he'd come and go. I mean, I'd be like, man, this ain't worth it, it's, you know. I'm wasting my wheels. I'm wasting time here. It's, it's, I'm going. I'm going to church. I'm praying. You know, little I know, I, I'm, I wasn't being patient. 
Did you grow up going to church, or did you go to church all of a sudden? You got a little jailhouse religion. I got. I started going to church around 2007. Ah. Uh-huh. And I was uh, I was in prison at the time. And, uh, growing up, mom liked to she'd read the Bible, but dad was you know, and none of the brothers, my brothers and sisters, wasn't. And it's just always on the go, always on the go. And when I started drinking, it was over. What made you all of a sudden in 2007 say, I'm going to give this a try? It's just in my heart, you know, it's, smoking marijuana, is, it's not, it's just, it's not going to help me. You know, it's just, it's just uh, in right now, a moment of escape. Yeah. And then I've had sellies that would encourage me, come on, let's go to church with me. And then I started picking it up and then I, and then I wouldn't, I'd stay out a month or two and go back. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize, even though uh, you may be incarcerated, there's plenty of drugs available. You could have kept that weed habit going just as easily in prison, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, it's always weed and, you know, always something, drinking. There's always a a julep. So you went the first time. What made you go back? And at what point did it catch hold inside of you that this is something I need to to do? It was just, it's just a feeling, you know, of... uh, the fellowship, the getting in there and having a good time, praising and reading the scriptures. It's just, it just felt in my heart, this is what I need to do. You know, it's just, it's just give me goosebumps when I go into church. And then I just started just going regularly. And then I slide, stay out a month or two, but I never would get into the drugs or drinking or smoking marijuana, or nothing like that again. I never. I just gave that up, and but I prayed about it. I prayed to God, Lord, let let me get rid of this this urge to want to get high, smoke weed, and then just he did it. He did it. Wow! How did the parole come about? Uh, I had to do a uh, twenty five on a on a life, and then I had to do another uh, five and a half on a uh, another charge, a robbery charge, and. When I got to my point, they, I never thought I'd get a chance to go up. I went up in early, a month early. They put me off six months, I guess, to see how I'd act, you know, which nothing changed. And then when I went back up six months later, uh, I was actually released to Men of Valor. Because they asked they go, they ask you where you want to go, where are you going to go when you make parole, what are you going to do? Yeah. And I, I had already talked to somebody in the in the pod that knows about all about men of valor and uh, at first i was going to go to a halfway house and my buddy told me you don't go to a halfway house you need to go to a whole house a whole house and i said what are you talking about he said men of valor and set up an interview with uh tommy matthews, tommy matthews. great guy yeah and just waited it out you know what i was thinking about when you got uh that uh, that extra six months We've had a lot of guys who've gone in and they were told six more months and they walk out of there and their whole attitude changed. They don't come back to our meetings. It's like God failed them. But you telling me that it didn't rattle you. It didn't rattle me at all. Why not? I know I needed I know I needed change. I, this was the only place for me. I mean, you got everything right here. I'm like Tommy Matthews said, he said, John, we're gonna walk with you for the first thirty days, every step. We're not gonna let you uh, slide back. You know what I mean? We're gonna get, mm. we're gonna fellowship with you. We're gonna praise. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna take you where you need to go. We're gonna get you licensed. We're gonna get you a job. I mean, that's what else could you want? Any, any kind of fear inside of you? Because you hadn't been hit yet, maybe with with old temptations. And no, 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 nothing like that. The only thing I was fearing was society being out there. You know, because it's changed so much. You know, it's 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 more dangerous on. Uh, out here, really, than it is in prison. I'm impressed because several people have already, you're, you've only been here a few days, it was a short period of time, and you were recommended to come and chat with us. Because sometimes I'll say, well, I don't know, we've had guys that we've talked to, and then uh, two weeks later, they're gone. Right. But something, they said something about you looks solid, that I'm, you intend to be what you are. I'm so, I've got saved the second day I was here. I, I mean, it was a feeling that I never felt before. I mean, my heart just opened up. Are you hungry to learn more about him? Are you stu- are you studying? I'm studying. Okay. I need to comprehend more. I need to touch up my 
learning skills, you know, reading and comprehending that and not being there. Wow. You still got family in East Nashville? Uh, I have a brother in Nashville and uh, down, like somewhere around downtown. I have a sister in Smyrna and a sister in North Carolina. Did they come visit with you during, during some of your time in? In prison? Yeah. No. Really? Yeah, it's kind of like if you're away for a while, it's just... Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. And uh, praise God, huh? Is it disappointing to you that they didn't? And how do they treat you now? Well, uh, a staff member here, I, I was having trouble getting a hold of my sister in yeah. North Carolina, and he didn't have no problem at all. He got on there and got me hooked up. And she's done Google this men of valor, and she's telling me all about it. She said, man, that's a good place, John. You need, you know, you need to stay there. And, so, so social media, my friend, there's a whole lot of ways to find people nowadays that, yeah. that you're going to find out about. I got a lot to learn on that, too. But it will. I, I'm not, you know, I'll get it when I get it. Well, God's first. <laughs> let me ask you this, though. Our program, the name of it is Put a Word on It. Have you thought about it? Is there a word that kind of fits your life or where you're at? When I walked in here, I, had, I mean, for the last five years, I had a headache, neck ache, stress. Because prison is very stressful. And, sir, I haven't had a headache. When I walked in here, headaches went away. Neck aches, none. So I would say peace. That's all. This is good. a peaceful. I mean, these. Man, I wish I could just tell everybody you're doing time, man. Especially if you've done a lot of time. This is where to come because you're getting, you're getting, every, you're getting structured. Yeah. You know, they're helping you everywhere, man. A lot of guys in their last few months before they get out, their minds are going a hundred. I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to hit the ground running. It I, seems to me one of the best things to do is to stop running. Yes, that's a good point. And take a breath. Patience. Huh? It'll come. I mean, just stay here and pray about it and get to, get to know the Lord and all my brothers here. I mean, I'm I'm still wowing today how it is here. Yeah, just have a little peace, right? It's peaceful and I love it. Well, you're a good man, John. Just a pleasure meeting you. Thank my you friend. very much. You know what I like about John is the fact that just with a mellow sense inside of me, he says, peace. I've got that peace inside of me. That's his word, and that's the way he feels. I think he'll be just fine. He knows who his Lord is, who his God is. He'll cope with things, and he's not running. A lot of guys I've talked to, I'm going to get out and do all of this. No, no, back off, relax. Let God open the doors and just take a deep breath because you're at peace. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time as we put a word on it.